Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Nathan Builds Robots. Today I'm going to be taking you to LA to check out Rapid TCT. There's a bunch of new printers, a bunch of industrial printers and new technology, and a lot of products that I know you guys are going to be excited about. So let's check it out. Alright, so first up in terms of new printers we have the Creality K2 Plus. Let's take a look at it on the inside here. You can see on the x-axis they've replaced the two um, polished rods with a linear rail. So I guess that might provide better performance. We've seen this kind of set up on like the VZBot and Voron printers. They've got a square hollow tube there with the rail on top so that should be stronger and lighter and also stiffer. So that's just going to improve your print quality at high speeds. The belts are looking pretty neatly routed there. Nothing to be too upset about. Um, if you look at this up top where the cable chain is, it looks like they have enough room for that Bowden tube to bend and feed properly. On some of the K1 models that was a pretty tight bend radius and I had issues with filament not feeding correctly. It looks like this time they've straightened that out and we shouldn't have issues with that anymore. Also we've got better cable management. There's just more space up here to do cable management. Um, something you can kind of see in the back of the frame here is we've got three large filters or fans. I'm not sure if that's a chamber heater or what but Regardless, it looks like they're going to have better ventilation, so you won't have to leave the door open to get lower temperature materials to print with high quality. Also, it looks like we've got some filters on the left and right side with sideways blowing vents, uh, so you, you'll have tons of air coming in from both directions to cool off your parts. The tool head looks slightly redesigned, and it just looks nicer and cleaner overall. If you take a look at the Z-axis, They've reduced the number of lead screws. Let me back that up a little bit. So on the previous design they had three lead screws and three linear rods. Here they have four linear rods and two lead screws. So that might be a cost improvement. It looks like it has a PEI spring steel sheet. And again this is a 350 by 350 build area. So it's quite a large printer. It's basically like a larger Bamboo Lab X1C. And then if we take a look up top this is Creality's new AMS-like unit. I guess this is the Creality Filament Management System. I'm not sure what they're going to call it. But regardless, it does have one big improvement over what the competitors are offering in that it looks like it's monitoring the temperature and the humidity. So this might actually be actively heated. So in that case, you'd be able to dry out your filament and keep it dry and loaded up in the top section of the printer. So that's a cool little improvement to see. All right, what else do we have? It looks like the screen is now up in the top right corner instead of in the bottom right corner. I actually like this positioning a little bit better. However, it won't function as a table quite so well because it looks like if I put a large flat object across the top here, this might be sticking up a little bit. So I don't know, maybe they can shrink the screen or move it down a little bit, or you can print out your own little screen protector in case you're worried about like setting a crate down on top of this thing which I actually do with my K1 printers they're pretty sturdy so I'll just set boxes and stuff on top of it and that might crunch the screen a little bit so you'll have to be a little bit careful there but overall that's a better location and they're not having to do the little cutout in the glass panel in the bottom right corner like they have on the K1 and the K1 Max alright what else do we have it looks like the hinges are improved oh, there I'm sticking my hand in the machine so these hinges look like some die cast aluminum little hinges. I assume this will get a better seal when you shut the door because the hinge isn't in the way of the door seal. So this should be a pretty quiet machine once you get it all set up. Alright so that's just a nice overall look of what's going on with this machine. Let's see, uh, oh yeah here's a nice little side view of that CMS unit. Um, yep should work just fine. Alright, so let's take a look at the next printer. It looks like we've got an Elegoo X1C. I, I don't know what this thing's actually called. Oh, it's the Centauri Carbon. So they're sticking with the naming convention of naming things after astrological bodies. And in this case, they're naming it after a constellation. I, I'm not sure. Uh, Centauri, I think that's a star maybe. But anyways, I guess they ran out of planets, so now they have to start doing stars. But regardless, this looks like a pretty capable little machine. It actually looks more like a K1 with hints of X1C in it. So not the most inspired design. Well I guess you could say that it's quite inspired by something else. 
But uh, yeah, it, it looks like it's just going to be another high-speed Core XY printer. And it looks like on that left side, what do we have there? That little nubbin sticking out the side? I'm guessing that's going to be a filament cutter and they're going to have some kind of multi-material unit on this as well. So, I mean, we've seen this design before by a bunch of different companies. It's kind of, uh, you know, cloned to death at this point. It's not printing in this video, but it's plugged in and uh, I'm going to press some buttons on there. I think I can turn on the lights. Yeah, there, the light's turned on, so you get a nice little view of what you're printing. Elegoo in general does a pretty good job with lighting on their machines, so that's nice. And then we got a little camera in the side there, so that's going to be used for AI failure detection and help you out if you have any failed prints. It should stop it. And you might have noticed in the background there's a Elegoo Orange Storm printing away. If you need a giant printer, that's probably one of the cheapest options. Next up, we have something I'm actually quite excited about this. I know I can't afford one of these. It's the Prusa HT90. I'm not sure what the 90 stands for, but you can see it's got carbon fiber rods, a really clean, sleek industrial design. The print quality, if we zoom in on this, that's quite nice. That's very good print quality. And one of the most remarkable things about this is how quiet the machine is. I'll turn the sound on for this one, and apologies in advance because the sound quality is awful, but you can't hear this machine at all. I was right next to it, trying to listen to it, and I couldn't hear <laughs> Sorry. it. Sorry. Just give it a little listen. Super quiet. Super it's so quiet. quiet. Yeah, you can hear me saying That's it's so quiet. That's like astonishingly quiet. So I'm a big fan of quiet machines, and this would just be the perfect little thing to have in the side of your office. It's fully enclosed. I guess they're doing something to seal the sound in and keep it from being noisy, like the uh, FL Sun S1 that I recently took a look at. That thing's noisy as heck. But maybe the CPAP cooling fan is turned off or to a really low setting or something. Maybe when the part cooling is cranked up, it'll be a little bit loud. But overall, this looks like a really cool design. It's super minimal. Like this print head is tiny looking. There's no like exposed PCBs or anything. It's just really nice, clean industrial design coming from the Prusa team. Now this is part of their Prusa Pro lineup. So it's gonna be really expensive. I'm not sure exactly what the MSRP is on this bad boy. But yeah, all right, let's take a look at the screen, see if we can get any hints as to what's going on here. Not really. All right, and then we have this demonstration here. I just happened to pan over right when this was happening. So take a look at this. Whoa. Uh, I was pretty impressed by that. Uh, you know, instead of having doors that swing open and take up a bunch of extra space, you have just a, a sliding panel that you slide up and out of the way. I guess you're going to have to have clearance above the machine because if you had stuff above it, it would run into that. But just a really nice design. Unfortunately, I probably won't have one unless Prusa is just nice enough to send me one. But uh, yeah, that's a nice looking machine. And that one was all new and announced at Formnext. So Let's move on to the next printer. This one isn't exactly new. I think it came out a little while ago, maybe a month or two ago. But this is the Anycubic Cobra something. It's got multicolor capabilities. So you can see it's got a very similar system to the AMS Lite, but it's also feeding out of a spool holder like the regular AMS. So it's just a pretty cool design overall. A lot of people are going to say that this is an AMS Lite clone. But really, this four kind of Bowden tubes feeding into the hot end, that was actually first pioneered by Prusa with the MMU-1, which came out a long time ago. So uh, yeah, there's nothing new here. We're just rehashing old ideas at this point. But it looks like, you know, a high-speed bed slinger that's capable of multicolor. I guess people like that or want that. And you can even see on the side here, it's got the little poop ejector just like on the A1. Cool machine. It looks like they are using some lower cost components to try and keep the cost down. But overall, I really like what I see here. All right, and next up, we have something for your Bamboo Lab printers. Now, I'm not sure if Slice actually wanted me to show what's going on with this thing. They just released it, and I, I open it up, and I take a look at the inside. But 
we're just gonna skip past that. I, I really should ask them if they want me doing an up close and uh, personal look. I'll show you this bit. Basically, you know, here's your heater block, and then there's, I guess, where a thermistor goes, and there's the nozzle. So they've actually come up with a new open source nozzle standard. We've been using RepRap style nozzles. I guess they're called the M6 style nozzle for quite some time now. But uh, Slice thinks that they've come up with an improvement on that design. Now they're using an M5 thread instead of an M6, and they've shortened it so it's just a smaller, lighter assembly. And uh, yeah, they shared that design with a bunch of other companies. So you can get the nozzle from Slice Engineering. Also, Bond Tech is making a version of it. Diamondback and Micro Swiss are all making their own versions. With Diamondback, you're going to get that polycrystalline diamond that's got super high conductivity. I talked to the Diamondback people briefly while I was at this booth, and uh, they have a, a really cool demo showing you the thermal conductivity of polycrystalline diamond, where I guess you can hold on to a piece of it and press it against ice, and it like freezes your fingers or makes it really cold really quickly. But yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. The silicone sock wraps around the nozzle, so that helps prevent you getting uh, filament and melted plastic buildup on the sides of the nozzle, which is a really common problem. And it also helps prevent air from blowing on the sides of the nozzle and sapping away that heat that you want to use to melt your plastic. So they've just done some overall improvements on this design and made a really nicely integrated product here. I'm going to pull that off and you can see this is a M5 thread and there's some pretty unique kind of geometry going on here. I guess this secondary circular machined feature towards the end of the nozzle is what they're using to create that nice seal with the silicone boot and that just kind of fits over it and kind of snaps in place. So that's pretty cool. If you want to install an upgrade to the hot end on your Bamboo Lab printer. There you go, you've got something from Slice now. I don't know a whole lot about it. I guess we'll figure out what the MSRP, it's on pre-order right now, so you can go pick one up. Actually, uh, this is a great time to drop an affiliate link, so I'm gonna put an affiliate link in the video description if you wanna try one of those out or get a pre-order. Uh, make sure to use my affiliate link. So they've got it printing here, and uh, yeah, I'm trying to get a good image of it. It was kinda hard to see, so I just opened this up. And there you go, that's the printer printing away with that new nozzle. I mean, um, I actually haven't used a lot of Bamboo Lab machines. These uh, X1Cs are actually pretty quiet, so I do like that about them. All right, next up, so we took a look at the FLSun S1 on my channel, I had one of those in and was trying it out. It's just insanely fast. It goes over a meter a second, which is like basically doubling the speed of what you can get on anything else they're just like completely going crazy with the speed on this machine they're using closed loop stepper drivers and CPAP style cooling and it's got like a pretty big build volume and it's just a super heavy duty fast machine it's it's pretty interesting but what's more interesting to me is the FL Sun T1 or H1 I think it's the T1 this is their kind of scaled back version of the S1 so the T1 is slightly smaller. The hot end itself looks a little bit smaller. It's using regular stepper motors and regular linear rails, so they're not going crazy heavy duty. But this thing's still fast, and it's quite a bit smaller and lighter and less expensive. So I think, honestly, that's going to be the one that most people are going to go for. Hopefully I'll get one of these T1s in for review. One thing I'd like to see them tackle with this product is maybe increase the soundproofing a little bit. You can see in this image, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but along the left side of this panel there's a gap, and along the top there's a bit of a gap, so any noise that's generated inside the printer is leaked to the outside, and that's something that with a little bit of extra attention to detail, they could get these machines to be relatively quiet. So I'm actually working on soundproofing my S1 to reduce the noise levels, and I've had a little bit of a success with that. Uh, I'll probably make a video about that later. All right, and this last one isn't a new printer, but it's a new material from Polymaker. So they printed this fiber-reinforced bell out of PPS-CF, and it's part of their Fiberon lineup. Now, I'm going to turn the sound on again so you can give this a listen. It's really crazy sounding. 
And in the bottom left, you can see my little thing that I printed and brought to the show. Um, more on that later. Polymaker's got some new filament. This is fiber reinforced. It's kind of crazy. It sounds like metal. It's uh, very strong. Oh, okay. Polymaker Nick had to step in and uh, correct my bell ringing technique. So let's take a look at that. Oh, okay. There we go. Remember to ring that bell and subscribe and like the video. Yeah, remember to ring that bell and subscribe and like the video. That's to you, dear viewer. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so uh, that's pretty cool. What else do we have here? Oh yeah, I guess this is new to me as well. I haven't taken a look at these yet, but let turn the volume down. Yeah, so these are Polymaker's new filament dryer box system. I don't really use filament dryer boxes, but Actually, now it makes a whole lot of sense why they released that product, because now they have these fiber reinforced high-end polymers that they probably want to keep dry and in good condition. So I guess it's kind of the precursor for their new fiber lineup. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, uh, I've been eating well here in LA. They have delicious food. And also, uh, yeah, I brought this print to the uh, the show to just kind of show off I like show and tell and uh, for some reason some of these guys I don't know who they are they just they just jumped on top of it so we've got the weight of three individuals on top of the print I guess demonstrating its strength I'm just kidding I know who these guys are this is 3d printing nerd and uh, David Tobin and uh, rep cord so you know they're a rambunctious group of content creators I guess they're just having fun with it. But I actually wasn't sure if this could support that much weight, but it turns out it can. So thanks guys for testing that out for me. Let me know in the comments if there's anything that you want me to take a closer look at, whether that's some of the printers or other materials or things that you've heard are at the show, and I might be able to do a dedicated video about them. I'm definitely thinking I'm gonna do a dedicated video about the K2 because that's got to be one of the biggest printer launches that's been announced in the last month or so. This, this Prusa thing is awesome, but um, you know what? I might make a video about it just because it's really interesting. But also the FL Sun T1, it's similarly fast. It's basically the version that the company probably told the engineers to make, but the engineers were like, no, we want to make the S1 too. So they got the S1, which is just like this crazy overkill thing, which is just cool. But also you have the more practical mass market model in the T1. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna do a video about that and the K2 and maybe that Prusa thing. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you think I should definitely cover or that you've heard of that's gonna be at the show and I can take a closer look at it. All right, so thanks for watching this episode. And remember this is Nathan Builds Robots, the definitive source of 3D printing news.